Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back. My hair is still wet. I hope you don't mind, or I hope you can't tell. Um, it is still a little damp though. Um, but I just wanted to go ahead and start filming. I've been, I feel like I've been getting ready to film for like two hours. So anyway, it is that time of year. It is December 29th, the day that I'm filming this, which means 2017 is almost over. And so I wanted to do a video talking about the best products that I have tried throughout 2017. Some of these are products that I've had longer than just this year. Some of them are a little bit more new to me. These are products that when I look at my entire collection of makeup products, these are just the ones that are just like my holy grail products for the year. I also have one skincare product and one lifestyle product that I will mention at the end. So let's just go ahead and get into it. So the first thing I want to mention, it's probably no surprise, is the Paula's Choice Resist Super Light Daily Wrinkle Defense. This is a tinted moisturizer is the best way I can describe it. And I use this before I apply foundation. And some days, most days actually, I don't even wear foundation and this is all I wear. It does even out my skin tone a little bit without, um, without providing a ton of coverage. It just gives a really nice finish to the skin. And my favorite thing about this product that makes it stand out from any other tinted moisturizer that I've tried is that it actually keeps my skin from getting oily throughout the day. So in a sense it's almost like a primer as well. I am wearing it today underneath my foundation. And by the way, I am wearing most, if not all, of these products on my face today. So hopefully you can kind of get a picture of what my favorite products look like in action on my face. Um, but anyway, that is a product that has been a favorite all throughout this year. I keep repurchasing it. I think this is like the third one I've owned. I'm gonna need to get a new one soon because as you can see it's starting to run low. So love that one. Had to mention it. Now let me go ahead and say that there is not a favorite for every category of makeup. I, I mean to be honest like I don't have a favorite mascara for example. I have some that have been really good but I don't have any that just like stand out as being amazing. So just so you know I'm not gonna invent a favorite even if there isn't one in that category. But all of these products truly, truly are favorites. So anyway, I did have a favorite foundation. Again, it's probably no surprise. It's the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation in Nude Ivory. I didn't try a whole lot of foundations in 2017. And I think the reason for that is because I really, really liked this one and I didn't really have a need to purchase any more foundations because this one kind of just does it all for me. I am wearing it today. This shade, Nude Ivory, is a pretty good shade match for me. Um, it might be a little bit too light, but it's it works just fine once I blend it into the skin. Um, the great thing about this foundation is it comes in, I think, 20 different shades, which is amazing for the drugstore. Um, most drugstore foundation lines don't cover that many shades, so this is great. I, f I love that it's kind of, that Wet n Wild is trying to be more inclusive of all kinds of different skin tones, so... Um, I'm happy that there is one shade light enough for me at least. Um, and they have several shades that are even lighter than this one. So um, I think that there truly is something that could work for everyone in this line. Um, I also think that this foundation can work for a variety of different skin types. So just to give you a background on my skin type, I have... This time of year I have kind of combo skin. I guess I would describe it normal to combo. So. For the most part, I'm not super oily. I do get a little oily in the T-zone. I have some dry patches, mostly around like my mouth area. And then the rest of my skin is pretty normal. I also have acne-prone skin, so I have some areas that I always like to kind of cover up. Um, and so I feel like I'm a pretty good judge of a foundation because my skin can range from oily to dry. So I've, I've kind of got covered all the territories covered here. Um, and I can confirm that this foundation works in the summer when my skin is super oily, and even right now in the winter when my skin is pretty dry. Um, and then everywhere in between as well. It has pretty good coverage. I wouldn't say it has full coverage, um, but it covers most of what I want. I don't like to have just like a totally blank slate where everything is completely covered. Um, but this does a good job. You can wear a sheer layer of it and get kind of light to medium coverage. You could wear uh, more of it and get almost a full coverage look. So it's just great. I, I can't recommend it highly enough and the best part about it is it's only like five dollars. So uh, yeah, love that one. So I don't have a concealer or a face powder to mention. I just don't. 
Um, but I do have a tie for my favorite blush. So both of these are drugstore. One of them, um, it's been a favorite for a very long time now, and this is the Milani Powder Blush in the shade Romantic Rose. It's beautiful. I'm not wearing this one on my cheeks because I decided to wear the other one. And if you've watched my channel for a while, you've probably seen me apply this at least once, or at least wear it. So um, I figured I'd wear the other one. But this is a matte, kind of dusty, rose-colored blush. I love the look of the product. It, it's like kind of a stamped in the shape of a rose and the packaging is like gold and it just looks very um, luxurious and high-end which I know that doesn't really matter but it just kind of makes it feel more fun to wear um, and I just love this blush for pretty much any occasion it goes with a lot of different looks maybe if you have a very deep skin tone you might not like this as much as I do um, which is probably true for a lot of colored cosmetics that I wear but um, yeah, love this blush so much. Um, I haven't tried any of the other shades in this line, but I would like to because they, this one has really um, set the bar pretty high for me. And then the other blush that I wanted to mention, and this is a more recent favorite. This one I've had, the Milani one I've had for a while. This one is more new to me. This is the Wet n Wild Color Icon Blush in Rosé Champagne. The weird thing about this blush is when I see it at the store and they have multiples of this shade, there are like two different shades, like some of them are a more beige color and then some are more like this where it's like a more of a peachy pink. So I don't know what that's all about. I don't know if they changed the shade and so you're just seeing both or what. If anybody knows the answer to that, let me know because I've been really curious. But I chose to get the one, uh, the Rosé Champagne, in the more pinky tone and this is what it looks like. This is not matte, it has a little bit of kind of a goldeny shimmer to it, but it's very little flecks of shimmer so it's not going to come off as looking glittery on your skin, which I do appreciate because I don't always want to have like glitter on my cheeks. This blush I really like to wear on days where I'm kind of doing like a no makeup makeup look because it's so easy to just throw on. I am wearing it today. You can really just throw it on and not really have to worry about if you're like placing it in the right area and if you're if it doesn't get blended perfectly it's okay because it just looks so natural on the cheeks so I love this blush obviously I don't even need to say that all these products are products that I love but um, just recently I started using it because I had it in my everyday makeup drawer and I couldn't stop using it I had to force myself to pick up my other blushes because I just was loving this blush so Definitely recommend that one. I don't know about the shades. Again, I don't know what that's all about. If they're like phasing out one formula and bringing in a new one or what, but um, I do love this particular blush that I have. Okay, so yet another Wet n Wild product <laughs> that I did want to mention as a favorite. And this is the last Wet n Wild product I'm going to mention. I, I don't want to sound like I only use Wet n Wild, um, <laughs> but I do love a lot of their products. And this is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Eyeshadow Primer. This is almost gone, so you can see it's gotten a lot of love. Um, I've had it for, this has lasted me over a year and a half, and I wear eyeshadow primer pretty much every day that I wear eyeshadow, so it's just, it's great. It does its job, and um, it's only like three bucks. There's not a whole lot I can say about it other than I, I do, um, if I don't wear eyeshadow primer, I do notice a lot of creasing and fading throughout the day with my eyeshadows, and this totally prevents that, so I don't have any creasing with it. My eyeshadows stay looking fresh and the same as when I put them on all throughout the day. So love that one. Can't recommend it highly enough. It's so much cheaper. I You really don't have to spend money on a high-end eyeshadow primer. This one is great. The Milani one is also great, but this is the one that I'm currently using. So And this is a little cheaper than the Milani as well. Okay, the eyeshadow palette that I wanted to mention. This is pretty new to my collection. I think I purchased this in... September or October, so I haven't had it the whole year, but it has far surpassed all the other eyeshadows in my collection, all the other eyeshadow palettes I've ever tried. And it's the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance eyeshadow palette. I know I've talked it to death, um, and you've probably heard it talked to death elsewhere on YouTube as well. So, um, but it's just, I mean, the quality is just so much better than anything else I've tried. The nice thing about this palette is it's, it's only $42, which I mean, that is a lot of money to spend on an eyeshadow palette, but it's less than a lot of other high-end palettes. I am wearing just this on my eyes today. Um, I've got 
Vermeer on the lid, it's this light shimmery pink. I've got Juan Fresco in the crease, um, a little bit of antique bronze in the outer corner, tempera as a brow bone highlight, and then cypress umber um, lining my lower lash line. So you can really create a wide variety of looks with this. Like today I went pretty neutral, which is what I do most days. Um, but you can also get really dramatic with these deep reds. Um, it's, I mean, there's a lot you can do with it. So yeah, I love this, love this palette. Very glad that I finally decided to buy it, like a year and a half after it came out. So I do have an eyeliner that I wanted to mention. You can probably guess what it is because I've mentioned it many times before, but it is the Physician's Formula 2-in-1, okay, let me make sure I say this right. It's the Physician's Formula Eye Booster 2-in-1 Lash Boosting Eyeliner and Serum. It's a liquid eyeliner. I don't know why it has to have such a long name. Mine is in the shade Ultra Black. I've heard that the regular black shade, not the Ultra Black, is not as good. So um, if you are looking for a black eyeliner, I would definitely recommend the Ultra Black shade. Um, it has a very precise brush tip as opposed to a felt tip, which I really like because it's a little bit more flexible than some of those really stiff felt tip eyeliners. And I, it's very opaque. This thing, this is my second one of these. My first one lasted over a year, and I finally decided to get rid of it, not because it had run out completely, but because I was just like, it's probably not very hygienic to keep using an eyeliner for over a year. So I finally tossed that one. It was starting to run out. But it's about 8 or $9, so it is a little bit more pricey than some other liners at the drugstore, but it's worth it because it lasts so long, and you never lose the opacity in it. I don't know if it would ever truly dry out. Okay, so my camera cut off and then I had to take out the memory card and empty it and then put it back in. So I hope that everything still looks relatively the same in the background and everything. So the next product I wanted to mention is one that isn't necessarily like that special, but it's one that I have repurchased so many times. I think I've probably repurchased it at least 10 times, which is way more than I've repurchased any other product. And so I figured it deserved to mention. It's the e.l.f. Clear Lash and Brow Mascara. Um, again, there's really nothing that special about this, but it's always the one that I go to. And I just use it to set my brow hairs in place. It's a dual-ended product, um, but it's pretty much the same thing on each side, so I use them both for brows. Um, so yeah, that's that. I don't know... I don't know what's so special about this, but it's always the one that I buy, and I use it up, and then I repurchase it again, so... Uh, just wanted to mention that. Okay, then the last two products, the last two makeup products I want to mention are lip products. The first one is a lip liner, and I am wearing both of these on my lips today. This is the Jordana Easy Liner for Lips in the shade Tawny. I use this lip liner more than I use any other one because it is such a universal shade. It is just a neutral, kind of rosy color, um, and so it pairs well with a lot of different things. I also like to wear it by itself, actually. Um, but today I'm wearing it under the other product that I wanted to mention. This is the Terramare Matte Lipstick in the shade uh, Napa Valley. And no one ever talks about these lipsticks. In fact, no one ever really talks about this brand in general. I am planning to do a video, just kind of like a brand overview, talking about different products this brand makes. This, by far, is my favorite product from them that I have tried. This is the only shade of this lipstick I own. Um, but I just love it. I mean, it's it's kind of just a reddish berry. I feel like it goes well with my skin tone, um, and so I just reach for it all the time, especially this time of year, like in the fall and winter. I just love it um, for this time of year especially, but I do wear it year-round, um, and so that's what I'm wearing. That's what you're mostly seeing on my lips right now, and it is called a matte lipstick. They do have a line of regular lipsticks as well, which I haven't tried, but for being a matte lipstick, it's very creamy, very comfortable to wear, but still has a good staying power. Like, it's not going to feather outside the lip line. At least on me, it doesn't. And also, being matte, it doesn't look totally dry. It, it still has a little bit of moisture that you can kind of almost see on the lips as well. So, as far as matte lipsticks go, this is my absolute favorite. Uh, if I could only have one lipstick that I would have to wear, like, every day, it would be this one. I just I just love it so much and I can't recommend it highly enough. This brand is super expensive, um, but they do sell on Hope Look every now and then, so that's when I buy them. Um, I would never buy this full price. I think this lipstick is like $60 full price, something around there, so yeah, it's crazy. 
but I, I love it. It's, it's so good. You have to try it. That's it for the makeup products. Now I do want to mention one makeup tool that just is so important to my collection, um, and it is the, find it here, it's the Urban Decay Grindhouse Pencil Sharpener. <laughs> and the reason why I'm mentioning this is because I've tried a bunch of different pencil sharpeners, and so far this is the only one where my like jumbo pencils will fit. So here's an example. Um, the like the Jordana um, eyeshadow pencils, as well as this one from Pixie, it's their Lid Last Shadow Pen. These would not fit in my other pencil sharpeners, even the ones that seemingly had the same uh, size holes. Um, the bigger hole just for some reason would not fit these pencils. So um, this is the only one I've been able to find that worked. There probably are others out there that would work for these because other people use these products too. I don't know what it was, but um, it has a regular sized hole and then a large hole for uh, jumbo pencils and it's so far it's just the only thing that worked for me. It was ten dollars which is kind of a lot but to me it was a good investment because now I'm actually able to use these products and sharpen them which is pretty important. So that is something I wanted to mention. I also have a skincare product that just was just off the charts this year for me and it is the uh, Paula's Choice Clear Anti-Redness Exfoliating Solution. This is for blemish prone skin, so if you have blemish prone skin, I'm talking to you right now. Um, this is their regular strength one, which is a 2% salicylic acid chemical exfoliant. Ever since I've used this, my skin has been in pretty much the best shape ever. Um, it has really smoothed out my skin. Uh, I used to have a lot of clogged pores on my forehead. It has evened those out quite a bit, um, and I, I'm getting less breakouts. Overall, my skin just looks a lot more even with this, and it's very rare that I find a skincare product that I feel like I can actually tell the difference. So this is something I've been using pretty much daily for the last couple of months, maybe maybe the last like three or four months. This is actually, I've already repurchased it because I'm almost out of the first bottle that I had. Um, so that if that tells you anything, I, do, I don't want to be without this product because it has really changed my skin, so I, that I had to mention. The last thing I'm going to mention is a lifestyle product. I mentioned this a while back in a favorites video, like way back in the spring, um, and it is my passion planner. If you are a planner lover like I am, uh, I this is my favorite planner ever so far. Um, and I did already get the 2018 one. Uh, the one I had in 2017 <laughs> is the large one. It's, I mean, it's the full-sized one, which is like an eight, eight and a half by eleven size. And then I did get the compact for 2018. So I decided I wanted something a little smaller that I could just like fit in my purse. But if you have really big handwriting or you just want to have a lot of space to write, definitely go for the the larger one. They come in a variety of different styles and colors and things like that. This year I just wanted to get the classic black one because it's just classic. Um, but the great thing about this planner, I mean I could say so much about it but I will try not to talk too much, um, is it really helps you lay out all of your goals for the year and just if you like to be really organized, which I do, um, it gives you enough structure to where you can feel like you have a direction to go in but it also gives you the freedom to kind of decide for yourself how you're going to use it. So if you want to hear more about it, I would recommend looking up. Um, there are tons of reviews of it here on YouTube. I thought about doing like a plan with me type of video, but then I realized like there's so much of my life in this planner that I don't know that I want to share everything um, because, I mean, I, I write everything in here. So um, it might be a little too personal for me to do that, but if you do want to hear more about it, definitely check out some other reviews. Um, these little tabs here I put in myself. They were just little like sticky tabs so I could easily get to each month. That isn't what it looks like when you first get it, but that's what I decided to do. There's so many ways that you can just choose to customize this. Their website has different printouts that you can get to like add in. Um, it's just great and I'm so excited to have another one. I'm so excited to finally crack it open and start filling it out. I guess I can show you what it kind of looks like, because this one is blank right now. At the beginning of the year, you fill out what they call, find it, your passion roadmap, and it's pretty much like a um, wish list of all the goals that you want to achieve in your lifetime, three years, one year, and three months. 
And then from there you create your passion plan, which pretty much helps you lay out everything you need to do in order to achieve that goal. So, and then from there you put it into your planner and you have, um, for each month you have a monthly calendar, which looks like any other calendar, plus a space to write down like your personal projects and your work projects and then um, that kind of thing. And then each week you get a very detailed uh, weekly layout where you have each hour from 6 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. every day of the week. Um, and then you have your personal to-do list, your work to-do list. Um, halfway through the year you do that same uh, passion roadmap again so you can kind of reassess where you are with your goals. Um, so it's really cool. It's a really cool idea. Um, the girl who came up with this, um, the CEO of this company, she's like 26 years old and I just, I find that so inspiring um, that she just came up with this amazing idea. So anyway, that's kind of in a nutshell what the Passion Planner is all about, but I've just been loving it. I feel like I, ever since I started using it, I have a, just a clearer picture of what I'm wanting to do with my time and what I want to accomplish. So I find that it's been really helpful for me. I definitely recommend, now that it's we're getting into the new year, definitely if you're looking for a planner to use for 2018, I highly, highly recommend the Passion Planner. So anyway, those are all of my favorite products kind of rounded up for the year of 2017. Um, and I hope that you found this fun and enjoyable to watch. If you did, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. And I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.